I can handle this on my own. <laughs> and don't call me little girl. So you survived the events in both Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil 1. The nightmare that ensued afterwards would be the Raccoon City outbreak, a result due to the T-Virus spread from the Umbrella Corporation's many experiments and mishaps. The remaining survivors of these events would go on to continue to fight against many more B.O.W.s, corporations following Umbrella's footsteps, or the many remnants of lunatics bound to achieve their goal using a new strain of a virus. Another Umbrella Psycho. So with all this information at hand, how did Rebecca Chambers survived the T-Virus outbreak during RE0 and RE1? Where was she in the midst of the Raccoon City catastrophe and what happens to her afterwards? Well in this video, we'll be covering the life and story of Rebecca Chambers, which we can begin with her initial debut in the original Resident Evil 1, her initial character design and development, her reprise role in Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil 2002, and her life after she escapes Raccoon City. So without any further ado, let's begin our video of Rebecca, the once Rookie Stars member, Chambers. I can handle this on my own. Rebecca. So making her debut in the original Resident Evil 1 in 1996, Rebecca was the newest member of the RPD STARS team, a group of highly trained and specialized individuals tasked to do higher level missions for the Raccoon City Police Department. Rebecca at that time was only 18 years young. Her qualifications to become part of such an elite squad was backed up due to her high intellect, known to have graduated from college at a young age, also being known to be proficient in the field of chemicals and medicine. A small note from Umbrella Chronicles backs up this information a member of the STARS Bravo team, Rebecca is an expert in the manufacture and preparation of pharmaceuticals and serves as a teen's medic. She is highly talented and graduated college at a young age of 18. Although she looks delicate, she is a woman of action and calm in the face of danger. <laughs> She lacks experience in actual combat, so she can appear childish at times and can sometimes hesitate when finding herself overwhelmed by an unknown situation. And don't call me little girl. So this allowed her to be an integral part of the Stars Bravo team, working as rear security and as their medic. Also around the beginning of her career as a Stars member, she would be acquainted with Richard Aiken, a Stars member who's known to be very welcoming to new recruits, which would be perfect for Rebecca due to the lack of combat experience compared to her other veteran colleagues. But how about you, Barry? I have this. Well, this lack of experience would soon change only after a month after she was hired as a STARS member because around this timeline, grisly murders and attacks were being reported throughout the outskirts of the city. STARS was tasked to investigate further into the matter, which STARS Bravo team would be sent out first. Rebecca being part of this half of STARS would place her into her first mission with the group. The important information here was the suspected sabotage of their helicopter, causing them to land right in the middle of the Arclay Forest. This was only substantial when Rebecca later confirms her tune-up of the aircraft just prior to the start of their mission. But moving along after their helicopter crash, they still happen to find information on a wanted fugitive, Billy Cohen, who members of Bravo team suspected that he caused the deaths of these military personnel. Court order for transportation. Prisoner Billy Cohen, ex-lieutenant, 26 years old. Court-martialed and sentenced to Death, July 22nd. Prisoners to be transferred to the Regathon base for execution. Those poor soldiers. They were good men just doing their jobs, and that scum murdered them and escaped. All right, everyone, let's separate and survey the area. Our friend is brutal and ruthless. Keep your guard up. This would have Rebecca continue her investigation around the proximity, landing her into the Umbrella Corporation train, the Ecliptic Express, starting her role in Resident Evil Zero, a prelude to her debut in the original Resident Evil 1. So before we delve into her major part of RE0, we have to quickly go over her role in the OG RE1 from 1996 so we can have a good grasp of her overall character foundation. 
Thanks. So Resident Evil 1 starts off a whole day after Star's Bravo team went to investigate into the Arkley Mountains. The other half of Star's, Star's Alpha team would be sent to search for their fellow comrades. This would also place them within the crashed Bravo team helicopter. Though soon after landing, Star's Alpha team would be attacked by infected Cerberuses. Joseph, a member of Star's Alpha team, would be killed. The remaining Star's members, Jill Valentine, Chris Redfield, Barry Burton, I have this, and Albert Wesker would take shelter into a nearby residence, which so happened to be the Spencer Mansion estate. Here, Resident Evil 1 would take place, and if playing Chris Redfield as a primary protagonist, we get the chance to meet up with Rebecca shortly into the game. Whoa! What is it? What? Oh! Oh no! Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you must be from the Bravo team. Yes, I'm Rebecca. Rebecca Chambers. I'm a newcomer. I just joined the Stars Bravo team last month. Well, I'm really sorry. Are you all right? Yes. I'm Chris Redfield from the Alpha team. Are you the only person here from the Bravo team? Well, because the helicopter made a forced landing, I just ran into this house anyway, but I, uh... uh... I see. There's nothing else you could have done anyway. It's good you're here. Yes, sir. But it's strange. I serviced the helicopter recently, but something went wrong with the engine. It was such a short flight. Well, what should I do now? If you go out to search for the other members, how about letting me come with you? Our first encounter with Rebecca would let us know that she was one of the missing Stars Bravo team members, that she took shelter after their squad arrived at the Arkley Mounds the night prior, which here on, she doesn't become a side-by-side -side character that would follow you around the mansion. Instead, she would give aid if injured during our playthrough, and have several more different interactions with her throughout our gameplay. On top of that, there would be several instances of her helping us move to the next area. One particular example of this was her using a piano to open up a secret passageway. Wait, what is that? On a quick note, remember this moment because I found it interesting that this ties in from her adventure in Resident Evil Zero. Anyways, besides that point, Rebecca would also assist in rescuing Chris from the large plant infected with a T-virus called Plant 42. We got to the root of the problem. Though in the latter part of RE1, there would be moments of Rebecca's life being in danger. This could come in the form of a hunter, Rebecca! and later on a gunshot wound she would take from the traitor of the Stars team, Albert Wesker. Rebecca and the rest of the surviving members of Stars would make their escape just in the nick of time, with the Spencer Mansion estate destroyed in the process. So completing the original Resident Evil 1, this gives us a solid foundation as to what Rebecca's overall character design and role was, serving as a rookie member of the Stars Bravo team, which only a month in was already put in the midst of the Spencer Mansion incident, and being one of the few members to survive during the course of that event. But even with these accomplishments already under her belt in the very first Resident Evil game, it was mentioned by the famous godfather of survival horror, Shinji Mikami, that the character that he disliked the most was Rebecca Chambers. A quote resounding this claim states, quote, if I had to name the woman character I most disliked in my games, it would be Rebecca Chambers. She's submissive, she's not independent, I didn't want to include her but the staff wanted that kind of character in the game, for whatever reason. I'm sure it made sense to them, and in Japan, that character is pretty popular." End quote. This statement stems from his desire to make a strong, independent female protagonist in his games. A perfect example to this would be the likes of Jill Valentine, and how she became a co-protagonist to Chris Redfield in Resident Evil 1, a result from the many game development changes that occurred during the production of this game, with Jill taking on more of the positive aspects and roles that Shinji Mikami wanted in his female characters. I'll take care of them. But Chris, you just get in contact with Brad somehow. Comparatively to Rebecca, who was stated to have taken more of Jill's initial concept of negative traits of submissiveness and helplessness. <laughs> Ah, 
But in the end, Rebecca as a whole in the original Resident Evil 1 did her part as establishing her character as a rookie officer, with a lack of experience but willing to help as much as she can using her expertise in her specialized field. I'll set off a triggering system for a bomb. Okay. So with that in mind, let's rewind back in the timeline of Resident Evil, more specifically a full day prior to Rebecca's adventure within the Spencer Mansion estate, which we left off her entering the Umbrella train, the Ecliptic Express, starting her adventure in Resident Evil Zero. This is Officer Chambers from Star's Bravo team. Please identify yourself. We see a vast improvement to Rebecca's overall character design and tone, showing her to be a bit more straightforward in her approach and would lack the wooden silliness of her dialogue from RE1. Yes, sir! And even with the overhaul of changes to her character personality, Rebecca was still portrayed as a rookie member of STARS, with a lack of combat experience only mitigated with her partnership with Billy Cohen. It's gonna be dangerous from here on in. Why don't we cooperate? Cooperate with you? Listen, little girl, if you haven't noticed, there's some pretty freaked out things on this train. And I, for one, want to get out of here. I don't think we stand a chance doing it alone. You expect me to trust you, a wanted felon? I don't need your help. I can handle this on my own. And don't call me little girl. All right, Miss Do-It-Yourself. What should I call you? The name is Rebecca Chambers, but that's Officer Chambers to you. Well then, Rebecca... Why don't you go and try while I wait here? Well, to begin Rebecca's adventure in Resident Evil Zero, like the rest of the STARS team around her, she would have to fight the constant amount of zombies and monsters. This nightmare was only compounded when she found her comrade, Edward, in an injured state. Edward! Are you alright? Uh, uh, what happened? It's worse than... Full of z zombies and monsters. Zombies and monsters. Well, Rebecca's adventure will continue on with Billy as co protagonist. Here, they would discover the cause of the T virus infection on the Umbrella train, the explanation to the leeches that's festering throughout the area, and the additional Umbrella conspiracies that would set up Resident Evil 1. It was I who scattered the T virus in the mansion. Needless to say, I contaminated the train too. What? Revenge on Umbrella. <laughs> Ten years ago, Dr. Marcus was murdered by Umbrella. You helped them, didn't you? <laughs> While Billy and Rebecca make it out alive from the train, their next destination would have them at the Umbrella training facility. Here, we're introduced to Dr. James Marcus for the first time, and later on, we find out that his importance is not just in this game, but would be an integral part of the series as a whole. But more on that later. Are you sure about that? But playing RE0, Rebecca showing that she was a very capable officer who's able to hold her own, with some rare instances of Billy saving her. <laughs> Rebecca! Hang on. I'll pull you up. Thank you. Don't mention it. Just keeping my word. And during the course of the game, it's revealed that Billy was actually innocent. He didn't commit the 23 murders that he was framed to have done. Billy, I just need to know. I need to know the truth. Did you kill 23 people? I'm not going to judge you. I just want to know the truth. It was around this time last year. Our unit was ordered to Africa to intervene in a civil war. Our mission was to raid a hideout of some guerrilla forces located deep inside the jungle. But the hideout was far away from our entry point. Some died from the heat. Others were killed by the enemy. In the end, only four of us survived.
Only, there was no guerrilla hideout. What do you mean? The idiots in charge had us operating based on wrong information. But we couldn't just go back home empty-handed, oh no. Our leader ordered us to attack an innocent village. Get rid of them! Kill them all! Please, sir! Cease fire immediately! Shut up! Ugh. Do it! So did you execute those innocent people? Forget about it. Doesn't matter anymore. That was then, this is now. Besides, you said you wouldn't judge me. I'm not judging you, but it does matter. Look, now my people think you killed those MPs in the van, but I don't think you did. And so the two continue on their journey, even for a short while being split up. Here we use Rebecca as a primary protagonist in the end third of the game. We even bump into Enrico Marini, Star's Bravo team's leader for the last time. And an important information we've learned from him was a nearby Umbrella Mansion. You're alive! Are you okay, Rebecca? Where is everybody? They should have arrived here before me. Haven't you seen them? That's unfortunate. If we go straight from here, we should arrive at an old mansion, which Umbrella uses for research. Come on, let's go. Wait! I've got to find Billy. Billy Cohen? You mean you found that criminal? Yes, but we got separated and- ah! No point worrying about him. He won't make it. Come on, let's go. Sir, please. I need to find him. Don't worry, I'll catch up with you. Rebecca, I... All right. Just be careful. I never saw him again. Though moving forward with our playthrough and in terms of storyline continuity, wouldn't her battle against the boss monster, the Proto-Tyrant, have her the very first Resident Evil protagonist to have ever fought these types of B.O.W.s, especially as we know how prevalent they were for the upcoming games in the overall storyline? Well, in the end, Rebecca and Billy would be reunited and they would come face to face with a man who's been able to control the leeches that's been festering around the area. And lo and behold, Rebecca and Billy find out that this individual was actually James Marcus, or more so the amalgamation of his queen leech that he experimented on and the consciousness that he previously had, revealing that he was betrayed by Umbrella and his former friend Oswald E. Spencer, with the two former being founding members of the Umbrella Corporation. Ten years ago, Spencer had me assassinated. Oh, time to die, Doctor. I will take over your research. <laughs> Wesker, Birkin. However, something wondrous happened. It took the T-Virus inside of my queen years to procreate my new life. I live. Now I will have my revenge on Umbrella, and the world will burn in an inferno of hate! <laughs> You'll pay for what you've done! We'll see which one of us is gonna die! <laughs> the leech that James Marcus was experimenting on would eat the portion of his brain after being assassinated. In doing so, would absorb his memories and consciousness, and would now enact his revenge against Umbrella. <coughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Uh, what do I do? Rebecca and Billy would now fight against the Queen Leech, which took on two different forms. Eventually, the two would take down this final foe in the end. Shit! Hey! 
Hey, Queenie! Feast on this! Rebecca and Billy make it out alive, and similar to what we've covered before in the original Resident Evil 1, the two make their escape just prior to the destruction of the Umbrella Estate. So far, we've learned that Rebecca was a very capable partner with Billy, which throughout Resident Evil 0, she's shown to have several key moments that help the duo move along the game. And remember this. Wait. What is that? Because in Resident Evil 1, it was Rebecca who would help Chris open the passageway by playing the piano. Here, Billy would take on that role, and I'd like to think that she learned from this experience from RE0 and seeing Billy play the piano proficiently. But in the end of Resident Evil Zero, the last goodbyes between the two protagonists felt bittersweet, though as shown that she needed to move on after seeing the Spencer Mansion estate from a distance. This brings the end of the partnership between Rebecca and Billy. As the two split, Rebecca now heads to the Spencer Mansion, in which she would take refuge for the remainder of the day. This until Chris Redfield would find her in the events in Resident Evil 1. Thank you. Rebecca. Well, so far, comparing the two versions of Rebecca that we've seen, it's easy to say that her rendition from Resident Evil Zero was a vast improvement compared to her debuted character version in RE1. Yes, sir! Though the continuity to her personality would take a step back when she transitions from RE0 to the newer version of Resident Evil 1, because you'd think that after her combat experience that she just went through in Resident Evil Zero would give her some sort of advantage in some capacity. But here again, the story beat plays along similar to the original version from 1996, but with some changes in how she was portrayed and the differences in interaction with certain characters, which begins when Chris Redfield finds her with fellow STARS member Richard Aiken. You. Chris Redfield, Alpha Team. We're here to rescue you. Richard, what the hell happened to you? Chris, this place. Get your team out of here. Demons everywhere. Don't talk. He seems to have been bitten by a poisonous snake. But the size of the bite mark is huge. It's not just any ordinary snake. <laughs> Take my word for it. He needs serum. I left it in another room. Here, Rebecca will be presented in a bit more serious tone compared to her first version of RE1, which she would help Chris on his adventure during the course of the game, being able to heal him when injured. This room is equipped with all sorts of medical supplies. I could pretty much treat any wound. Want me to treat your wounds? No. 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 Saving him by giving him a serum when infected by the giant snake Yawn, and still help rescue him from Plant 42. <gasps> And again, as mentioned earlier, this story beat still plays along the same path, and Rebecca here still plays the piano. Oh, what was that? She would still have her life in danger several times throughout the game, and would still be shot by Wesker. Rebecca! So in the end, Rebecca and crew would make it out alive from the Spencer Mansion estate after defeating a more refined version of Tyrant, which compared to the proto-Tyrant that she fought in RE0, which after the remaining STARS members escaped via helicopter, making their way back to Raccoon City. So before we delve into her life after the events of both RE0 and RE1, there was more emphasis on her recount prior to Chris finding her inside the Spencer Mansion, which comes from Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles, explaining the events after parting ways with Billy and how she fell asleep once arriving inside the mansion. 
After splitting up with Billy, I went to the mansion where Bravo Team was to rendezvous. When I arrived, I found that none of the others were there, and the mansion was unsettlingly quiet. I was exhausted from the events of the previous day, and before I knew it, I had drifted into a nightmare. You're okay? I'm fine. We were fighting some monster, and... Edward's dead. I see. It's not much better on my end, either. We got attacked by those things, and had to split up. The rest of the team is either in hiding, or... We just have to find Enrico. He'll know what to do. <laughs> what a horrible first assignment, huh? First, we have to get to someplace safe. Another point of emphasis in this game was her interaction with fellow Stars member Richard Aiken and how the two would pair up prior to their rendezvous with Chris. And to be honest, I love this extra retelling of events around this timeline. Also, I like how the two spotted Sergei Vladimir and his tyrant bodyguard and how the two really tried to hold their own during the course of Umbrella Chronicles, waiting until help could be provided. It's probably just us now. Help will come. I'm sure our captain is out there somewhere. So don't give up hope. Besides, I'll back you up. <laughs> and with me around, what could go wrong? This retelling also shows how Richard sustained his injuries from the giant snake Yawn and connects to the storyline on how Chris met up with the two Stars Bravo team members inside the Spencer estate. <laughs> I messed up good. Some backup I made. Richard. Don't make that face at me. <laughs> We've still gotta have hope. Someone will come and rescue us. I I know it. I hated how hopeless I felt, seeing Richard lying there, wounded. I had to be stronger, I had to fight, and I had to survive. No matter what happened, I'll prove I have what it takes to survive. Well, like her fellow Stars members who escaped the Spencer Mansion, she would soon arrive back at Raccoon City. Here, there would be a gap on where her exact whereabouts would be, except the fact that the remaining Stars team tried to inform the public and the police chief of Umbrella and experimentations using the T-Virus. We could assume that Rebecca was part of this information spread, except Brad. <laughs> Because even in the Resident Evil 3 epilogue picture, we don't really see Rebecca when they confronted Chief Irons in regards to this point, and the consensus was that she went into hiding, and soon after made her escape from Raccoon City, just before the T-Virus outbreak went into full motion. But before leaving the city, Rebecca would leave a last file that connects her role in Resident Evil 0 and Billy Coleman, which could only be found in the Nintendo 64 version of Resident Evil 2. And the reasonings for this was because Resident Evil 0 was originally being developed for 
for the Nintendo 64, that is until it was ported to the Nintendo GameCube. Anyways, besides that point, this file states, In July 23rd, an MP vehicle was found inside the Arkley Mounds. Corpses of the MP members were found near the vehicle. According to the information from military authorities, the unidentified body was identified as former ensign Billy Cohen, who was sentenced to the death penalty following a court-martial on July 22nd. While Cohen was on transfer via Navy MP escort, they must have experienced some sort of accident. The corpses were severely mauled, apparently torn apart by an unidentified wild animals. The following day, we returned to the location to recover the bodies, but they were nowhere to be found. Military authorities have requested that we hand over Cohen's body as proof of his death, but due to the circumstances described above, it will be a difficult task to recover the corpse. I am requesting that this case be temporarily closed until further notice. Raccoon City Police Department, Rebecca Chambers. And so like Rebecca said before, officially, Officially, Lieutenant Billy Cohen is dead. Yeah, I'm just a zombie now. So after her escape from Raccoon City, information on Rebecca's life would be portrayed in a live play called Biohazard The Stage. Here she would go on to continue her education and specialize in virology. With now, Dr. Chambers would be approached by Chris Redfield and the early formation of the BSAA, which Rebecca agreed to be an advisor of the organization. On top of that, she was a university professor. So the overall plot of this live action Biohazard The Stage, Rebecca, Chris, and even Pierce Nivens would team up. Rebecca's role was to infiltrate Philosophy University in Australia, where there were recounts of missing students, finding out that they were being used in a series of experiments to alter intelligence and using the T-virus as a catalyst. Also, a revelation was found out that the person behind this mess was a former Umbrella researcher. <gasps> Again, Rebecca and crew had to fight off against another bioterrorist attack, filling the gap in the storyline prior to her major role in the movie Resident Evil Vendetta, which takes place after the events from Resident Evil 6. Here, Rebecca being a top scientist of vaccines and virulent strains, she would assist Chris Redfield and Leon Kennedy stopping the spread of a new A-virus, also known as the Animality Virus, created by a man named Glenn Arias, a former CIA agent who lost his wife during a drone attack, and the potency of this newly created a virus was in full display, where the virus was made up of three different strains, which Rebecca was able to figure out, stating that one was to infect, the second would act as a trigger to cause a mutation, and the third was able to control those infected and use them in a coordinated attack. This third aspect was only possible due to Glenn researching the Las Plagas parasite from Resident Evil 4, obtaining and researching the genome that would retain control of those infected, similar to how the Ganados followed Osmond Sandler from RE4. Oh, I believe I forgot to tell you that we gave you the same gift when I was unconscious. Oh, I truly hope you like our small but special contributions. When the eggs hatch, you will become my puppets. Involuntarily, you'll do as I say. I'll have total control over your minds. Also within the movie, Glenn Arias would have Rebecca play his fantasy of remarrying his deceased wife. This was due to Rebecca having a strong resemblance to her. He even went all out in the wedding venue decor, having Rebecca in a wedding dress and his now zombified friends inside boxes attending this wedding, which we can easily conclude that Glenn is just batshit crazy. <laughs> also in this movie, Rebecca would be infected with this new virus and was the one who would find a cure, being able to create it in mass and save thousands within the city using an aerosolized method. So without Rebecca's expertise in virology, vaccines, and knowledge of BOWs, a world-ending pandemic could have been the result from this very pwned A-virus. So in conclusion, Rebecca started off as a rookie member of the STARS Bravo team. Being part of an elite group was only possible due to her high intellect and her expertise in the scientific field. She would be one of the few to survive the events from Resident Evil Zero, the Spencer Mansion Estate, and later on stopping Glenn Arias and his spread of the A-virus, showing how much she's grown as a character throughout the years and being a very integral part within the Resident Evil franchise. Anyways, what do you guys think about Rebecca Chambers and where do you rank her among the many protagonists within the series? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoy the content, then please feel free to check this video out right here. Anyways, thank you guys so much and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day and this is Hey Deva, and I'll see you guys on the next video. And don't call me little girl. <laughs>